The impacts of a changing climate present themselves in different ways, and one of them is the increased risk of catastrophic flooding in California. So imagine the string of storms that we just went through, but with two or three times as much moisture. These photos were taken today in Tracy. Now, tonight, Monica Woods is looking back on the spillway crisis in Oroville nearly six years ago and looking ahead at what the state is doing to prepare for the worst case scenario. All of our tools were tough march on the water. It looks like a bomb went off there. Imagine the biggest storm you have ever been through. He had to chainsaw his way out his front door. Cold, hard rain has local creeks and rivers running high. All this came underneath the doors. What if the rain didn't stop? A levee breaks, and now your neighborhood is taking on water. In Sacramento region alone, there's over 514,000 people that are protected by these levees. Studies suggest that Sacramento is actually one of the top 10 in the nation most at risk for flooding due to rivers. The most intense atmospheric river storms are likely to become significantly more intense. And certainly this spillway incident was one of those instances where we did not have time. Are we prepared? This is Mega Flood. We're already in a world where the likelihood of a catastrophic flood has doubled at any given year. And that's the kind of thing that keeps people like, like us up at night. Brian Johnson is a member of the Central Valley Flood Protection Board. Their mission, updating the state's plan to keep us all safe from catastrophic flooding. People talk about how we may be overdue for the big one for an earthquake in Northern California. That's probably true for the big flood as well. A flood event that would dwarf the record-breaking water year of 2017, when the Oroville Reservoir couldn't hold the amount of water coming in from rain and Sierra snowmelt. On February of that year, we had a series of storms coming into the lake. We were operating the lake like we normally do to hold back some of the water and then release it gradually into the Feather River when we found um, the damage in the spillway. Unfortunately, um, it was damage that was too large to repair and really resulted in a failure of this, this spillway. Making it nearly impossible to release enough water from the rapidly rising lake, putting pressure on the country's tallest dam, standing over 70 stories high. The risk of massive flooding growing by the hour for people living in the valley below. Well, me as a mom, um, the first thing I thought was, get my family out of there. You know, um, it was, excuse me. Um, it was very scary at that moment. One set of parents down the street, the other 20 minutes away. Mariana and David moving quickly. It was mayhem for a while, man. People were going crazy here. And a life they worked so hard to build, hanging in the balance. I mean, friends here, I mean, you know, our house where I was born at. I mean, it's <laughs> just, uh, like, for example, this, we built this ourselves here. We put the trailer here, we put the porch here. I mean, things we worked or, you know, tears, blood and sweat type of deal into it. I mean, imagine all that going to yeah, I mean, I guess losing it. You work so much, you just feel like somebody just took it away from you. The Rodriguez's remembering the night they and nearly 200,000 others got the call for immediate evacuation. The state responding to reduce the risk of a repeat. 13 million pounds of reinforcing steel was put in place here. And then additionally at the emergency spillway over to the uh, left here, uh, we placed uh, 750 a thousand cubic yards of concrete to help protect the hillside. I'm walking on top of the country's tallest dam, holding back over 3.5 million acre feet of water. Now, if this whole facility were to fail, it would send all of that water downhill, flooding areas like Oroville, Marysville, and even into Sacramento. The valley is a natural floodplain, sitting thousands of feet lower than our highest peaks. Snowmelt and runoff move downhill, filling reservoirs. When water is released, it keeps moving downstream to rivers, a dangerous place for accumulating water. The Sacramento River as a whole is called a perched river, which means the bottom, the flow line, the bottom of the river, in many cases is, is higher than the land that's on each side of it. So the river is actually higher than the surrounding land. The only thing holding back this water are what we call levees. In Sacramento region alone, there's over 514,000 people that are protected by these levees. One break in the system can cause deadly and massive destruction like these levee breaks in Yuba County from 1986 and 97. The communities that would most likely be affected, it would be in the low-lying areas of the valley. They were effectively wetlands, 
and now they're being protected by levees. Like Natomas, West Sacramento, the city of Sacramento, Stockton, Lathrop, and Manteca, all home to large growing community developments. And that's why close to $8.3 billion is being spent on levee improvements through a federal civil works program. By the funds that have been allocated, we've We've improved about 140 miles of um, the 300 miles with about another 160 miles more to go. Which will offer protection to about 1.1 million people and over $100 billion worth of assets. Near where the Sacramento and American Rivers meet, another big project is underway to move water away from high-risk areas in Sacramento and Yolo counties. This is the Lower Elkhorn Basin Levee Setback Project. We're setting back the existing Sacramento Bypass Levee by approximately 1,500 feet and the Yolo Bypass Levee by approximately 1,500 feet. This will help alleviate downstream water flows by allowing more water to flow into beneficial areas for agriculture and the environment. This project is being implemented in close coordination with another project coming shortly the Sacramento Weir Widening Project. Together, these will reduce the water surface elevation in the Sacramento River by as much as a foot, adding another layer of protection during big flood events. But these structural changes can only do so much in the face of climate change, with research showing California's risk of a megastorm doubling due to warming. It, it will be a challenge uh, for sure because the, the infrastructure that was constructed back in the 30s, 40s and 50s, like the, the, the dams um, and, and levees and the hydrology information that was available at the time at which those structures were designed is pre all, all of this. Joe says this is a time of renaissance though, with improving forecasts giving water managers like the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers new flexibility in a program called FIRO. F-I-R-O, Forecast Informed Reservoir Operations. And it's this uh, idea that if you understand um, forecasted events better, if you can get better forecasts, then you can make better water management decisions. Knowing when to keep water in and when to let water out. We've made significant progress, but that progress isn't happening at a pace and scale that we know is, is needed. And with climate change, winning slowly is losing. Well, Monica, <laughs> we know our infrastructure was really put to the test these last few weeks. What worked? What didn't work? Well, obviously with the flooding, that didn't work. So we still have areas of improvement. And you heard right there that we still have areas of levy improvements to be done, as well as partially with our reservoirs as well. So what's key here is the reservoirs had plenty of capacity to hold the water. We did let some water out in full, at Folsom. And that's where one of the big sticking points is, is stop letting water out. But how do you do that without preventing flooding, right? Yeah, and since we're in a drought, you know, that's what everyone is asking. Is there a way to keep our neighborhood safe while still holding on to all that water? Okay, there's a couple of programs, and one of which is going to be the groundwater storage. And we're still working through the process of that. That's called SIGMA, Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. That is something that is working on putting in place. So that will be taking surface water, putting it underground. One of the other big factors is FIRO. You heard it right there, mm -hmm. Forecast Informed Reservoir Operations. What that's going to do, and it's being used on three places right now, Lake Mendocino, uh, Prado Dam in Southern California, and then also in the Yuba Feather River Basin, that will be taking better forecasts and allowing us to hold more water in these bigger years because we're not so afraid that we're going to get flooding from those big storage. Storms, yeah. yeah. All right, Monica, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We appreciate it.